In early 2021, I was one of the thousands of Army National Guardsmen activated all across the U.S. to assist with the COVID-19 pandemic response. For about three months or so, I would do administrative tasks as people came to get their vaccines. It was a cool mission to be a part of. But now I'm sure you're asking, wait, isn't this a computer video? Why are you talking about Army stuff? Well, following that federal activation, Private Zach had made some good money. He also had his money that he had saved from basic training the previous year. Needless to say, Private Zach had a bunch of disposable income. So I dropped my money on a gaming PC. It was relatively modest, uh, Ryzen 7 2700X, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 1050 Ti all inside of a budget case. As the years went on, I was happy with my system, but when I was a junior in college, I was looking to upgrade my system. So I met up with a seller on Facebook Marketplace where I purchased a RTX 2070 Super. And my God, what a jump. From a 1050 Ti to a 2070 Super was amazing. I could play modern AAA games at high frame rates. Now, fast forward to earlier this year, 2025, I've slowly been upgrading my system over the years and I decided that it was time I start looking for another upgrade to my GPU. I decided to get the 5060 Ti and I was disappointed. Now, don't get me wrong, it is a large improvement over the 2070 Super, but it wasn't the jump I was expecting. It didn't give me the same wow factor as the jump from the 1050 Ti to the 2070 Super, especially considering that I got the 2070 Super secondhand for just under 200 bucks, and the 5060 Ti was just under 500. Older 40 and even 30 series cards were still expensive at the time too. Part of the blame for my disappointment was because I had gotten that 2070 Super for such a great deal. But at the same time, the fact that you have to drop hundreds of dollars to see significant performance boost to me is absolutely crazy. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, I totally understand why these cards are expensive. They take a lot of money and a lot of technology to produce. I get it. It really got me thinking about the cost of gaming. Moreover, it got me more interested in stretching a dollar. How far could I possibly go with the least amount of money? If you look online, there are tons of people who turn old office PCs like the Dell Optiplex or the Lenovo Think Center into gaming systems. But I wanted to use last gen and older components to build an entire system from the ground up. Now that brings me to this video, the cheapest okay-ish gaming PC that I can build. I've taken up a lot of your time already, so let's just jump in with the parts I've purchased, starting with the motherboard. I'm gonna voice over this part. I kinda ended up just yapping about a lot of unimportant stuff here. All you need to know is that this is a Soyo X79 LGA 2011 motherboard from AliExpress. It cost me $32.11. And it's missing the CMOS battery. The motherboard price plus the CMOS battery pack I had to buy makes the motherboard cost $34.16. All right, the next item we got is the power supply. This is a 500 watt channel well technology 80 plus bronze power supply i actually got this off of facebook marketplace i met up with a guy he charged me 20 bucks for it came a little dusty i cleaned it off it works i used a little power supply tester and it runs the power cord right here was not included this is a dollar seven cents um so that brings this up to 21 dollars and seven cents the next item i have here is our graphics card this is an msi GTX 960. I actually got this for a really good price. I got this off eBay. Me and this other random dude were in a bidding war. We were going back and forth, and he was winning with one minute left in the bid. And I was like, ah, I'll put another couple dollars down and see what happens. And then I get a notification on my phone, and it turns out he retracted his bid. And then I win. And I'm immediately worried. I'm like, oh no, did I overspend for this thing? But it turns out I didn't. If you want to buy, Buy now prices for these GPUs, GTX 960, it's around $40, $50. I got this for $31.57. Really good price. This thing came in practically pristine condition. Excited to use it. Now we move on to the next category of items, the Dollar Express items. For context, the Dollar Express is a special tab on AliExpress. It's a curated page where items are ultra cheap. And if you purchase three of them, you get free shipping. While items of high quality aren't found on the Dollar Express, it's still tons of fun to scroll and look at random stuff that's only worth a few bucks. So the majority of items in the next section, minus the CPU, were found on the Dollar Express. All right, so let's move along to our AliExpress, the Dollar Express items. I ordered these all within like the same week. They all came in within a week to two weeks later. And I'm telling you, it was like Christmas. I was opening these packages 
and I forgot what I got, and it was just so fun to see all these little tech treats come in. Let's start with the storage. So, I got a few items here. Let me lay them all out. I haven't fully decided what I'm going to use yet, but let's start your left, my right, and work our way down. So, for starters, this is a 250 gigabyte SATA hard drive uh, made by Hitachi to save people with those vibrators. So it was pulled out of a laptop and it was sold. I got this for $3.61. We're in the day and age where you shouldn't really be having a hard drive in your system to run an operating system. But for games, I'd say this is all right. You know, lower end single player games. I wouldn't really run multiplayer games. You might load in slower than everybody else. But having a game drive with a spinning disc, I think it's perfectly viable. Next is this Best Toss 256 gigabyte SSD. This is an M.2 NVMe SSD, so it's going to go in that little slot on the motherboard. I haven't decided if I'm going to use this. I'm still iffy about it. Moving on to our SATA SSDs, we got three. This one, I was actually a little disappointed in my purchase of this, and I'll tell you why. This was one of the first things I ended up buying off of the Dollar Express. This is a 120 gigabyte SATA SSD. I got this for 15 around $16. So 120 gigabytes. Keep that in mind. These are Som Ambulist, never heard of them, 512 gigabyte drives. Now the reason why I'm disappointed in this 120 gigabyte drive is that these were like 18 bucks each. So for three, four more dollars, I practically quadrupled the space in here into one of these. So I made a mis you know, I made a mistake purchasing this. But for $15, it's really not that big of a deal. It is what it is. So yeah, that's what we got for our storage. Moving on. Our next item is a Fenvi PCIe wireless adapter. This is going to go in that extra PCIe slot. Standard Wi-Fi adapter. It's got two little plastic antennas. I'm telling you, these are just straight plastic. It's pretty standard. I got this. $3.61. Not bad. Moving on to the RAM. One thing that a little that annoyed me with the Dollar Express is a lot of items, they only allow you to buy one at a time, which kind of is a little bit annoying with RAM, but it is what it is. So with our motherboard and with the system being last gen, we had to deal with DDR3 RAM. So the sticks we got are eight gigabyte sticks at 1600 megahertz. So the first one we got here is by Jazer. It's this black stick. It has a neat little sticker on the left side of it. Other than that, it's pretty standard for its time. This is before we started putting all these fancy LEDs, you know, the colors or these fancy little heat sinks on a RAM. So, or DDR3 RAM. The next one we got here actually caught my eye. This is a Poose Kill 8 gigabyte stick. And it's just got a pretty cool design on it. I feel like we really don't see this nowadays with computers uh, and their components. I feel like computer components are really now trying to go with this sleek, you know, just straight black, white, or silver design, and really goes for more of the lighting side. But I feel like back in the day, you saw a lot more designs being placed in the components themselves. You know, 10, 15 years ago, you'd you know you'd see graphics cards with like a guy with guns on it or some spy girl on it. We really don't see that stuff anymore now. It's all very just basic coloring. All right. So next, we got our CPU cooler. This is an eight degrees downdraft cooler, and we are not going to be using this. So I'm going to show a picture real quick of the reviews for this cooler. And they were all talking about how this cooler just came in a busted up box. My box is also busted up. And how the heat sink fins are super flimsy and they came crushed and deformed in the box. So are mine. So I'd be okay with this initially. I mean, this thing was super cheap. I think this was only $5. But I just wanted a fan that spins. You know, I could easily bend these all back in place by hand. I am telling you, these are flimsy. But I got this cooler before I decided what CPU I wanted. So let's go to the CPU. You'll notice I have two in my hand. And I'll tell you why in a second why there's two of them. And why this matters, what cooler I got. So in my hand is the Xeon E5-2690. All right? You probably haven't heard this line of CPUs. That's okay. They're really not used that often for gaming. Now, the reason why I have two of them is because these are server CPUs. I think I got both of these in a pack for $12.99. These both run in the same system, which is why they come in a pair. The reason why I'm deciding to not use a downdraft cooler is because these have like a TDP of 135. These things can draw a lot of power, therefore can generate a lot of heat. 
and I am not confident in the slightest that this piece of junk, not saying that my other cooler you're about to see is a piece of junk, but there's no way that this thing can even come close to cooling this under load. Other than that, the CPU has base clock speeds of 2.9 gigahertz, and it has higher caches than your standard workstation and gaming computer CPUs. But other than that, for the system that we got paired with our GTX 960, this is a fine CPU. Now, that leads us into the actual CPU cooler we are actually going to use. This is another one made by 8 Degrees, also found in the Dollar Express. And the first thing I noticed when opening this, from the bottom, mind you, I don't know why I did that, was just, there was just more care put into this. I mean, I should say, there was any care put into this. The inside of the CPU box with the downdraft one, it is empty. But you have the mounting bracket and screws and the cooler. And this one, they were nice enough to put foam in it. The impressive thing with this cooler is that it comes with two fans, which is, you don't really see that that often. For, well, I mean, for a CPU cooler as cheap as this, I did not expect that in the slightest. So this is what we're going to be using for our CPU cooler. It's a tower, it's got two fans, it should be fine cooling our server CPU. That brings us to our last and our big ticket item, the case. This is a 7 Hero E621 gaming PC case. It's got three fans in the back. It's got plenty of space. Other than that, it's just a pretty good budget PC. It's got a nice tempered glass side panel, so you can see all the beauty going on, on the inside of our budget PC. But this was $51.31. And as you can see, all my items I've purchased are either secondhand or dirt cheap Chinese items. The case is the only thing that's not that. And I think the main reason behind that is shipping costs. It's just as cheap to get a brand new case than it is to get a secondhand refurbished or cheap Chinese one. I think it's simply because of the box size. Like I was seeing cases that were filthy, five, 10 years old. They were selling them for like 60 bucks. But all that money, I'm sure, just going into shipping. These guys didn't have a use for these cases, but they couldn't get rid of them. And it was just as cheap for me to get a brand new case and a used one. Other than that, that is everything. And we can start assembling this thing. Assembly went by pretty smooth. I had zero issues. The case looks pretty sleek with everything installed as well. For the storage, I ended up using the 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, the 120 gigabyte SATA SSD, remember the one I wasn't happy with purchasing, and then the hard drive. After installing Windows, I installed Crystal Disk Info to check the health of the drives, and they all look good. Even the hard drive, which I expected to be heavily used, it was literally brand new. Let's head into the benchmarks. For context, I have the GTX 960 4 gigabyte VRAM variant, and then everything will be running in 1080p. So let's start with some Minecraft. I ran around in some vanilla Minecraft on fancy settings in a single player world, and it ran fantastic as to be expected. The game ran around 150 to 250 frames per second in a brand new single player world. So if you're playing multiplayer, it might run a little bit slower, a lot more people moving around, a lot more blocks being placed. Whether you're playing single player or multiplayer, it'll run completely fine. Next, we're going to turn it up a notch with Overwatch 2. I'm using the high preset for graphic settings, and this is where you start seeing the GPU bottleneck. It was running at practically 100% the entire time, but the game still ran great. It was at around 80 to 90 frames per second most of the time, except for moments where multiple ultimate abilities were being used. Then it would drop kind of around to 50 FPS, but it was never to the point where it was close to unplayable. Next, let's hop into some Battlefield 1. The settings were set to the in-game medium preset, and again, the game ran pretty good. I played some conquests and operations, and the game ran steadily around 70 frames per second, only dropping to around 40 to 50 in intense situations. Next, Let's move into some Counter-Strike 2. This is being tested in a casual match, which has a lot more players running around, more shooting, and more grenades. So, therefore, in an actual competitive match, you'll see higher frame rates and just overall better performance. The game is running at mostly low settings, but has the super resolution setting disabled. In combat and game, frames were mostly around 100 to 110 frames per second. If choke points were just absolutely doused in the smoke and molotovs, it would drop to around 80, but... Still, it was really good performance. Moving on to GTA 5 Enhanced Edition, we're going to run around a little bit in the online mode. The game is running in the normal preset, which is essentially just GTA 5's low setting, and the game ran around 50 FPS when I was just driving around and shooting pedestrians. Even in this little scuffle I had with police, it only dropped around 45 frames per second when cops were swarming me and the helicopter exploded. Not bad at all. And finally, let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077. Like all other games tested, this is running in 1080p, 
I have everything set to the lowest possible setting. The game runs at about 40 FPS with not much going on, and at heavy combat, it would drop to around 20 to 25. Don't get me wrong, 20 to 25 is low, but considering this is a GTX 960 running Cyberpunk, that's impressive. With the resolution scaling slash super resolution setting enabled on performance mode, it gives us a pretty impressive boost. Standing around with not much going on gives us around 55 to 60 FPS, and with pretty decent combat, it would drop to around 30 to 40 obviously at a cost of a pretty heavy drop of visual quality. Overall, I was honestly surprised with how this system held up. It's not going to max out Cyberpunk at 4K with ray tracing, but every game I tested was totally playable. And that's what really matters at the end of the day, is they're able to enjoy the games that you want to play. The big takeaway is that you shouldn't copy what I built. That's not the point of the video. The point is to show you that you can go to the secondhand market or elsewhere, find high quality parts for cheap that you can throw in a system and play games that you want to play or your friends want to play. That's all that matters. Other than that, that's all I had. Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you watching my video.